Hello there. <clears throat> Welcome to Just the Dis. Talk about Blu-rays here and 4Ks. And today we're going to talk about some 4Ks and some steelbooks um, from various studios. Uh, Warner Brothers, Universal, Paramount, and Mill Creek on the steelbooks. But let's start with uh, Steven Soderbergh's film Contagion from 2011. Uh, a movie that has obviously proved to be incredibly um, alarmingly prophetic uh, in its, you know, sort of predicting of and reflection of the pandemic we've gone through um, from 2020 on. And, uh, you know, it's about, again, an epidemic of a lethal airborne virus that kills within days, rapidly grows, uh, the worldwide medical community races to find a cure and control the panic that spreads after or faster than the virus virus itself. Um, Steven Soderbergh directed solid, you know, I guess a medical thriller or whatever you would call it. Uh, incredible cast, Marion Cotillard, Matt Damon, Lawrence Fishburne, Jude Law, Kate Winslet, Gwyneth Paltrow, Brian Cranston, Elliot Gould, John Hawks. Um, it's it's a really deep bench of a cast, and that makes it almost feel like a much more dire '70s disaster movie in a way. Um, but it's one that I know a lot of people watched during the pandemic, and it really resonates for sure. Uh, so this is a new 4K UHD of the film, and it's it hits as hard as it ever did, and uh, this is a really, I think, a nice-looking 4K transfer for this movie, and uh, yeah, it's one that it's, it's a little tough to watch now. It definitely has a different feeling watching today than uh, in, back in 2011, when I did find it pretty alarming then but it seemed like some kind of science fiction in a way I mean even though I'm sure that it's been shown that the science that they're dealing with was like right on the money um so I love Soderbergh I love his ability to go between all different kinds of genres be it comedies dramas crime films um smaller thrillers I'm thinking of something like Bubble which I don't have my Blu-ray handy, but it's out of print. Um, I'm definitely less talked about Soderbergh film, but yeah, this one, I mean, the back says a lethal virus threatens humanity and the medical community and everyday heroes race against time to find the vaccine. Uh, while society grapples with the unfolding chaos, the suspenseful thriller from director Steven Soderbergh captures the urgency of a global crisis Watch resilience in action as the world searches for answers in the face of an unstoppable pandemic. Um, the only thing I would love to have had this this ports over uh, the the extras are leave a little to be desired. The sound is good. the the video is good. It comes with a digital code. But I will say the extras, I would have loved to have had a Soderbergh commentary just because I'd love to hear him engaging with the science of how and how he sort of managed that. And, and I mean, obviously it's in the script and that's part of what he's dealing with, but um, I'd love to hear him talk about it and maybe spin out in some conspiracy theories or whatever he would have had in 2011 that would have almost like indicated that this was going to come or something. Uh, so I wish we had that, but what we do have is um, three short featurettes from the Blu-ray. That's all that's ported over reality of contagion, which is an 11 minute, uh, featurette, uh, The Contagion Detectives, five minutes, and How a Virus Changes the World, two minutes. So a lot of this is about, you know, the the science involved, and some of it is about the characters in the film. But it's only about, you know, 18 minutes worth of stuff, and I just, I would love a little bit more, especially because this movie has become so much more prominent than it was in 2011. I remember in 2011, it definitely scared people, but now it's a whole other thing. So it's nice to see this get a 4K uh, release, and it is a nice one. It's from Warner Brothers. Um, so that's good good stuff there. Next 4K. <laughs> okay, just bear with me. Bear with me, please. Ticket to Paradise. Um, this one, 
I think of as a pandemic movie. It came out in 2022. And um, it's one of those that when I saw the trailer, I was like, no way. I'm just, I'm not interested in that movie. George Clooney and Julia Roberts being mean to each other as divorced spouses for an hour and a half does not sound up my street at all. And the way the trailer was cut, the insults that played in it just seemed so petty and annoying. And as shocking as it might be, when I started to watch the movie, I will admit the turning point for me comes... Uh, I mean, you know, just so you know, it's Academy Award winners George Clooney and Julia Roberts team up as exes who find themselves on a shared mission to stop their love-struck daughter from making the same mistake they once made. Ticket to Paradise is a romantic comedy about the sweet surprise of second chances. So so the, the idea is obviously they are estranged and divorced and their kid is going to get married and it's... Um, it's she's played by uh, Caitlin Deaver, who uh, you might know from other films like Booksmart, uh, and she was recently in uh, No One Will Save You, which is still on Hulu and a really interesting, if in my mind slightly flawed but still scary movie called No One Will Save You uh, about an alien attack. Um, spectacular now, you know she's she's um, she's great in this. She's really good as the daughter. And so it opens a little bit with her and her meeting this guy. Um, shoot, I forget who plays the boyfriend in this or the fiance rather, but he's like a seaweed farmer in like Hawaii. I want to say I'm, I'm forgetting where their destination actually is now, but, but that's what he does. And she meets him. I can't, I think she's on a trip there and she ends up sort of falling for him. And so, there's a great opening montage, and I'm a sucker for music. Um, music supervision is my trade at the moment. And so when you can pull a good needle drop out of somewhere, sometimes that's enough for me. And they they open the movie and play the credits with um, uh, Go Where You Want to Go, I think, by Mo- The Mamas and the Papas, which is a great song. It's actually a repeater for me, a movie, a song that I can listen to end-to-end 10 times in a row and never get sick of it. Um, so that sort of immediately knocks me down. It, it busts through my defenses, my arms folded sort of, I'm like, okay, wait a minute. What? Why would they choose this song? These kids are young. They wouldn't necessarily even know that song. That's clearly coming from outside the story and that's okay. But it definitely caught me off guard and kind of allowed me to go, okay, okay. You know, maybe I'll watch this. And it ends up playing sort of like a classic screwball comedy in some ways. And I think that's that was my way into it. I think the idea of having these two who hate each other and they're big stars. You know, Clooney is more or less a Cary Grantish type. And you could say Julia Roberts is, I mean, beyond a Kate Hepburn type. She's her own thing. But, um, but they have their personas and they can be both compelling and abrasive and it works in equal measure in this film and it's just was ultimately more and you can see where it's going it's almost a parent trappy kind of story and I've seen that story played out over and over but for whatever reason I started to get involved in it is it great no it's not great but for me I just was like there's no chance I'm going to have any enjoyment of this and I ended up being touched by it and ultimately um, would recommend the film if you were on the fence Um, but, um, yeah, this 4k looks nice again, comes with a digital code and, uh, the, it's got a few special features on it. Um, return of the dynamic duo destination wedding production in paradise, keep a straight face. And these are, you know, um, featurettes that deal with the cast and, uh, the, the location and uh, sort of a gag reel kind of sto- thing. So like it's relatively standard stuff, but it is nice to have it included nonetheless. And it's nice to see, especially in a movie where they're supposed to be so adversarial, people having fun and stuff like that. So really nice looking movie shot, you know, on location and um, kind of a 
for me, a fun little lark that I didn't expect to like. So anyway, that's the 4K of Ticket to Paradise. Now, moving on to the Paramount stuff, we got Footloose. Um, okay, I know there were a lot of reviews saying this transfer was okay or whatever, but go check out In Search of Physi Physical Media. His channel is really dedicated to um, deep analysis of transfers and... Uh, and he takes a lot of time on that stuff and I'm just never going to be that guy. So, you know, if that's what you're looking for, I apologize, but you probably already realized that's not my forte. But when I watched this transfer and he did have issues with it and I would recommend watching his review to get a sense of it, but I do get a sort of an idea of what he's talking about. There's a dinginess to it and it just doesn't, it doesn't pop in the way that I would have liked. And so I get why he might be be a little taken aback by some of the reviews which are saying that this transfer is great it in some ways it looks like a step up a little from the blu-ray but it's it's unfortunate because it just doesn't quite break through in the way that i would have liked but i mean this is a classic 80s film and it's one that uh you know is a big vehicle for kevin bacon uh was a big one for Lori Singer, who I um, I'm a big fan of. I was talking about her in a film I recently discovered called Made in USA, which also stars Chris Penn, who's in this movie, and uh, Adrian Pazdar from Near Dark. And um, Lori Singer, a really great, charismatic, lovely actor who, you know, just had a a shorter window than some of these other actors in this film, like. This cast is incredible. You know, you've got Kevin Bacon at the center of it. Then you've got John Lithgow, Diane Weist, uh, Sarah Jessica Parker. Um, you know, Chris Penn, as I mentioned. It's it's a really, you know, wide-ranging group. And for those that don't know, uh, Kevin Bacon plays a teenager called Ren McCormick. Uh, and, his, and he and his family move from big city Chicago to small town... Um, oh shoot, is it, I forget where, does it say on here? Jumping with the spirit of freedom, dazzling dance numbers, and an electrifying 80s musical soundtrack, Footloose comes to 4K Ultra HD for its 40th anniversary. Uh, it's the timeless struggle between innocent pleasure and rigid morality for city boy Ren McCormick, newly moved to an uptight small town where dancing has been banned. Ren quickly become, makes a new best friend in Willard, that's Chris Penn and falls fast for the minister's daughter, Lori Singer, but his love for music and dancing gets him in hot water equally as fast. Featuring a treasury of hit songs from Kenny Loggins, Shalimar, Denise Williams, Bonnie Tyler, Quiet Wyatt, John Mellencamp, Foreigner, and more. It's a soundtrack movie, for sure. Uh, it's directed by the great Herbert Ross, and is likely his most known film. But if you're not aware of Herbert Ross, he did a lot of great stuff. Um, much of it in the 70s. I mean, he also did Steel Magnolias in the 80s, but he did things like, well, Secret of My Success also, and My Blue Heaven. <laughs> so he's got a lot of comedies. But he did The Goodbye Girl in 77. He did Play It Again, Sam in 72. Uh, the Last of Sheila, one of my favorite murder mysteries in 1973. That's a really great movie. A big one for Ryan Johnson and the Knives Out films. Owl and the Pussycat, California Suite. Uh, so he had an, a kinship with... Um, uh, Neil Simon's material, and he did one called The 7% Solution in 76, which I was going to try and grab my disc of, but, oh, there it is. Uh, there's a great Shout Factory disc. This is one of the best, not to get two sidetracks, one of the best Sherlock Holmes movies that you probably haven't seen with um, with Alan Arkin as uh, Dr. Sigmund Freud and Robert Duvall as Watson and um, Lawrence Olivier as Moriarty. And it's just, um, it's really something. Anyway, that's a Herbert Ross movie. But like I said, it's weird that Footloose is now probably the one that he's most known for. But uh, yeah, it's, it's music from the very get-go. Uh, the, you know, the Kenny Loggins song with Dancing Feet opens the movie. It's unforgettable in that sense. And then in terms of the rest of the soundtrack, things like Let's Hear It for the Boy, again, Denise Williams, Almost Paradise, Love Theme from Footloose by Eric Carmen, 
Holding Out for a Hero, Bonnie Tyler, that's a big one. Dancing in the Streets, that's Shalimar. I'm Free uh, by Kenny Loggins. And uh, Somebody's Eyes, Carla Bonoff. And The Girl Gets Around by Sammy Hagar. Uh, and then there's those are sort of the main ones. Uh, Somebody's Eyes by... Uh, oh, I'm just looking at the... Um, the, the full listing here. But then there's other little songs. So those those songs are featured a little bit more prominently, but then you'll have something like Bang Your Head by Quiet Riot. You know, Kevin Bacon's pulling up to the high school and that's playing in his car and he gets out and everybody's just kind of looking at him weird. And, you know, that's just kind of what he listens to in his car. But then you have like Hurt So Good by John Mellencamp, Waiting for a Girl Like You by Foreigner, Dancing in the Streets, like an extended remix version sort of it going on. So there's a lot to talk about in terms of that soundtrack, but it, it's it's an enjoyable, if predictable, um, sort of movie, but was a huge hit, obviously, and it's still fondly remembered. And so it's nice it's getting a 40th, edition, 40th anniversary edition re-release. This comes with a Blu-ray and a 4K. I do wish the transfer was a little better, but uh, the Blu-ray uh, commentary with Craig Zadden and Dean Pitchford, commentary with Kevin Bacon... Let's Dance, Kevin Bacon on Footloose featurette from uh, Beaumont to the Big Apple, an interview with Sarah Jessica Parker, Remembering Willard, Kevin Bacon's screen test, Kevin Bacon costume montage, Footloose, a modern musical part one, uh, Footloose, a modern musical part two, so sort of making of stuff happening there, and then Footloose songs that tell a story all about that soundtrack. So it's a nice release, again, comes with a digital code and a Blu-ray and the 4K, and most of the features are on that Blu-ray. So a little bit of a bummer about the transfer, but um, this is what we're going to get, folks. I don't think they're going to reissue this one. So that's the Paramount Footloose. And then also from Paramount, briefly, we have Varsity Blues. Um, This ties into another Mill Creek release, which, of course, is Dawson's Creek, the complete series, which I haven't talked about on the channel yet, but which was one of my wife's favorite shows. And um, and of stars James Vanderbeek and Katie Holmes and Michelle Williams and Joshua Jackson, Michelle Williams and uh, Michelle Williams actually seems to be the one with the most legs in her career. She's still working a lot. She's doing a ton of movies and has really come into her own. Um, but this this movie definitely um, comes on the heels of Dawson's Creek. And it's a football movie, and I like sports movies. Uh, you know, they. I'm not a big sports person anymore. I used to like football, but um, I do like football movies. But this has got another really strong cast. It has James Vanderbeek, Amy Smart, John Voight as the coach, Paul Walker, um, Scott Kahn, Ali Larder. You know, um, it's it's a memorable group. Jesse Plemons is in it. Uh, celebrating 25 years, the hit high school football comedy drama comes to 4K HD. At first, uh, backup quarterback Jonathan Mox Moxon, that's Vanderbeek, uh, is nowhere close to being a star athlete, perfectly content to stay on the bench. He has no time for Coach Kilmer's, that's John Voigt, uh, win, win at all cost strategies. But when the quarterback is injured, um, I think that's um, I think that's Paul Walker. I can't remember now. Um, Mox, uh, is in the game and soon confronting the pressures and temptations of the gridiron glory. Soon everyone in Mox's football craze community will realize there's not just a new star quarterback in town. There's a new kind of hero. This exciting and often funny coming of age story features outstanding supporting cast, Paul Walker, Amy Smart, Scott Kahn, Ellie Lauder, Jesse Plemons. Um, this one, the transfer looks pretty nice, although there's something about some of these Paramount things that... I know it's a big step up from the Blu-ray, from what I'm... Again, uh, in search of physical media, check out his review. He does a comparison, and you can see marked improvement. Um, so this one's definitely better than the Footloose transfer. Um, it is a two-disc set and comes with a digital code. Um, the 4K... I think only has the commentary with director Brian Robbins um, and producers uh, Tova Later and Mike Tallinn. 
And then it has some featurettes. Uh, Football's a Whale of Life, The Making of Varsity Blues, and Two Days, The Ellis Way, Quarterback Game Analysis, and Billy Bob with No Bacon. So multiple featurettes on here, sort of making ofs that give you a sense of the movie. Um, so it's a nice package for fans of Dawson's Creek, uh, fans of football movies, fans of James ba- Vanderbeek, and this young cast. Just general fans of 90s movies, because this comes out in what 1999 uh so just at the end of the um 90s but i feel like there's a lot of nostalgia for 90s movies now and so this is a movie that um is going to appeal to a lot of people in that sense um okay let me just zip through some steel books from mill creek i will start with my favorite of them which is walk hard the dewey cox story um this one is just one of the great spoof music biopics uh, from Judd Apatow and Jake Kasdan, obviously starring the immortal John C. Riley as Dewey Cox. And it's, you know, taking off on the music biopic, I think, in the success of Walk the Line, the Johnny Cash biopic that had come out previous to this. Um, Pop Star is still one of my favorite spoof music uh, movies. And I like it a little better than this one, but this is pretty ridiculous. And what's neat about this, this Steelbook set is it is a um, two-disc set, and both discs are records, which is kind of cool. Um, and it includes uh, two cuts of the movie. It includes the theatrical cut, which runs 96 minutes, and the director's cut, which is 120 minutes, so quite a bit more. And that director's cut is known as the unbelievable, long, unbelievably long, self-indulgent director's cut. Uh, again, that's Jake Kasdan, son of Lawrence Kasdan, who did one of my favorite movies of the 90s. I think it was in the 90s, or is it 2000s? Zero Effect. Um, really great movie. Worked on Freaks and Geeks and has done um, some other fun films beyond that. But this is a really fun collaboration between Apatow and his troupe, um, and Kasdan and their all their sensibilities coming together and just spoofing in the biopic genre, really being silly about it, you know, with um, one of the most iconic figures in rock history, Dewey Cox, John C. Riley had it all, all the women, uh, over 411 served, the Friends, Elvis, the Beatles. I love it when they bring in real or <laughs> other actors playing real. The cameos in this are incredible. I, I'm not going to spoil them if you haven't seen it. Uh, rock and roll lifestyle, a, a personal relationship with every pill and powder known to man. But most of all, he had the music that transformed dim-witted country boy into the greatest American rock star who never lived. Uh, and a wild and wicked send-up of every musical biopic ever made. Dewey, while Walk Hard, the Dewey Cox story is a gut-busting proof when it comes to hard rocking, living, and laughing. A good man is hard to find. It's funny because they not only they spoof biopics but they're also bringing in elements of Elvis and the Beach Boys there's this very Brian Wilson-y phase he goes through there's one point where he starts beating up one of his plants it's actually one of my favorite scenes in the movie it's ridiculous it's a giant plant he's just beating it up ridiculous stuff um bonus features include the making of walk hard extended not footage not seen in theaters deleted and extended scenes commentary with Jake Kasdan and Judd Apatow John C. Riley and Lou Morton, very good track. Music of Walk Hard, 16 full song performances. That's the other thing is they've made up his persona and the songs. That's one of the things I love about pop stars. They make up the songs and they are ridiculous, but they work within the context of what they should sound like. Within the musical genres they're trying to ape, they work as songs, but they're silly. So there's 16 full song performances, a Christmas song from Dewey Cox, song demos, line arama Cox sausage commercial with outtakes, the real Dewey Cox, and the last word with John Hodgman. So a ton of features on this. It's a really nice steel book. And like I said, one of the best, you know, spoof comedies ever of the musical genre. Uh, next up we have, um, uh, I know what you did last summer. In a steel book. This is not a 4K, unfortunately. This is just a Blu ray. This is all from Mill Creek. Uh, of course, Jennifer Love Hewitt, Sarah Michelle Geller, Ryan Philippe, Freddie Prince Jr., and Johnny Galecki star in this terrifying tale of a body that won't just won't stay dead after an accident on a winding road. Four teens make the fatal mistake of dumping their victim's body into the sea. Exactly one year later, the dead man returns. 
from his watery grave and wants more than an apology. Um, I don't think this has any features, but uh, it is a nice looking steel book with uh, a plastic slip case on it. This is a 90s classic, you know, written by Kevin Williamson, who was hot off of Scream, a very self aware and um, a solid genre writer for sure. So, big 90s movie. Fans of Varsity Blues probably like this movie. I would, I mean, not if they're horror people, but anyway, that's a nice steel book. Then we have, um, let's see, let's continue the horror. Uh, and another Kevin Bacon connection. We have Hollow Man on Steelbook. Uh, this is the director's cut. And this is with Kevin Bacon and Elizabeth Shue from Paul Verhoeven, director of Robocop and Total Recall, comes director's cut version of the heart stopping suspense thriller Hollow Man. When power-hungry scientist Dr. Sebastian Kane, Kevin Bacon, and his team develop a serum that induces complete invisibility, they can't wait to put it to the test. Having successfully performed the procedure on animals, Kane is determined to amplify, attempt, uh, attempt the ultimate challenge, human experimentation, <coughs> excuse me, using the uh, formula himself to do the unthinkable. But Kane's experiment takes an unexpected turn when he uh, fails to return, when it fails to return him to normal. Growing more and more out of control, Kane is doomed to failure without flesh as the Hollow Man. This does have a few in, uh, <coughs> features. Full transparency scoring the Hollow Man. A new interview with Jerry Goldsmith, biographer Jeff Bond. Oh, I guess that's it. Uh, and it is the director's cut. Um, so that's a nice... Mo a lot of times these don't have features, but I'm sure this is a nice scan of the movie and a nice steelbook if you're a collector of those. And this movie, a little goofy, a little dark, a little off, a little incorrect, but um, maybe worth re revisiting now, uh, many years later. This was a 2000 release, I think. So it's... It's quite a bit older, um, but I do love that you can watch uh, Kevin Bacon in Footloose and then see a very different turn for him in The Hollow Man. And lastly, we have a steelbook of Anaconda. Uh, this one, uh, of course, stars a... Well, it's a documentary film clue headed by anthropologist Steve Kale. That's Eric Stoltz. And uh, I forgot Eric Stoltz was in this. Um Director Terry Flores, Jennifer Lopez, ventures into the world's most isolated jungle, the Amazon, in search of a lost and forgotten civilization. Early in their journey, they come to the aid of Paul Cerrone, a Paraguayan guide, that's John Voigt, more Varsity Blues connection there, who joins their expedition, but uh, Cerrone is actually a poacher on the trail of a legendary snake. When Cerrone hijacks the boat and its crew on his quest to track and kill the giant snake, he steers the expedition right into the path of the deadly monster. Get ready for a wild, scare-a-minute thrill ride. So this has a... There's a devil inside uh, everyone directing Anaconda. A new interview with director Louis Lassa uh, is included here. Um, and uh, the cast also obviously includes uh, Ice Cube and Owen Wilson... Yeah, it's been a minute for me on this. And this came out as a double Blu-ray set with some of the, one, at least one, if not multiple sequels. I definitely saw the second Anaconda in theaters and it was not great, but this one is still fun. And it's a nice steelbook presentation from Mill Creek. So that's Anaconda. Uh, so that'll do it for this round of stuff. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.